selecting only certain rows in the data frame based on some kind of criterion is obviously a very useful and powerful um, operation that we might want to perform when we're wrangling our data. And uh, it, before we look at how to actually do this in the code, we need to talk a little bit about how the selecting works. Um, so if we recall back to how um, operations are performed on series and on data frames, we recall that uh, this is called uh, vectorize operations. So when we uh, have a particular operation that we specify, it's going to be done on every row in the data frame or every item in the series. So if we do a Boolean operation on a column in a table, it is going to do that operation on every single row in the column and produce some kind of a result. So just to re review some of those different operations, we can check whether two things are equal to each other, whether something is, is uh, smaller or earlier in the alphabet than another thing, and so forth. So any of these operations are going to produce either true or false, depending on whether the condition that we're testing is true or not. So if we perform this operation on a column, then what we'll generate is a series. And that series is going to contain um, a, a set of Booleans, that is true or false values, that's exactly the same length as the number of table rows. So essentially, we'll get a, a series that tells us in order whether this condition was true or false for each row inside for each row inside our table. So the way the selection works then is if the particular series item that is um, matched up with the row is true, then that row is included in the output. If the series item for that row is false, then that row is excluded from the output. And then um, the output view that we are creating um, contains only the rows that are true. And it also includes the indices that came from the original data frame. So to see what this looks like diagrammatically, let's imagine that we have our, our little data table here. And the criterion is that we want to select all of the kinds of, or, or all of the animals that um, have greater than five legs. So if we look at this table here, we can see that spiders have eight legs, bees have six legs. So the criteria will be true for those two rows. The criteria will be false for lizards and worms, which have four and zero legs respectively. So if we run the condition, um, so this table is called organism info, and the column name is number legs. So if we say organism info column number legs, is greater than five, then the series of Booleans that we'll generate will be false, true, false, and true, with the first false indicating that the condition was false for the first row, um, and then the next true indicating that the next row the condition was true for. So if we then sort of map these true and falses onto our original table, we're gonna generate a new table where only the rows for which the values were true are included. And that would end up producing a smaller data frame that only has those two rows in it. And as you can see, the indices that they had in the original table are retained in the output table, which um, makes sense in terms of the labels. It might seem a little bit weird that the indices are not renumbered, but remember that this is actually just a view of the data. Um, so this row still represents row number three in the original table. We're just not looking at all of the other rows. So the way this is implemented, um, we can simply use the kind of bracket notation that we had here, but instead of um, indicating a slice of the data, we can indicate the condition for the data that, uh, that we want to use to select. And so this expression organism info number of legs is greater than five, the one that we use to generate this Boolean series is the thing that we put into the square brackets. And that is what will end up generating the output that we see here. So let's go ahead and apply this to our table. 
So we are going to go ahead and read in uh, another table that also has CO2 data in it. Let's see what that looks like. It's a much more extensive table because it doesn't just give the data um, for one year, but actually for a bunch of years ranging from 1990 all the way to 2010. So um, it's got a lot more data than we had before. And it, so it lists the state, and then it also lists the, um, the different sectors that we saw before. So if we want to, let's say that we want to filter out only the columns that, uh, or fil filter out only the rows in the state column that have Alabama in them. So um, remember that there are actually two different ways that we can refer to a column. In many of the examples, we use a square bracket notation, but if the column name has a, a very simple form with no spaces or anything, we can also use the dot notation. So what I'm going to do here is basically um, check for the condition of which values in the state column have Alabama in them. So if I go ahead and run this, I can see that that is true for the first four rows, and then it's false for the other rows after, or actually the first five rows, rows zero through five, uh, four, which you can see is, is true here. But starting with row five on down, the condition is not true. So this is the series that we have built based on this condition. It's got 255 values in it, and they're all Booleans. So if I um, then want to filter by a particular um, condition, so for example, what if, if I want the condition that um, the state column has a value of Alaska, I can insert that into the square brackets. And then if I run this, we'll see that the output uh, data frame only includes rows five through nine, which are the rows in which this condition was true. Um, I can also um, check for a value in the sector column. So here I'm using the square bracket notation instead of the dot notation, but otherwise it's, I'm basically doing the same thing. And so what I'm doing is checking whether the sector column has a value of industrial uh, industrial, and there's going to be a whole bunch of rows, so I'll have it only display the head of that. And I can see now that what I've done is basically pulled out the rows for each of the 50 states, um, and then uh, I have the industrial sector values there. So if we want to have this these data be retained in a view instead of just displaying them like I did here, then I can go ahead and assign them to a new variable name. And so if I do that, I have the same result, but since it's been assigned to a new variable name, I can now use that variable to perform other operations that I want to on that subset of the total data set. 